Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the October monthly call. Um, this is Misty Woods, and I'll be leading today's call. I do want to apologize in advance. I am having a little bit technical difficulty with my headset not working, so I apologize if I'm a little bit lower or a little bit muffled than normal. So let's get started. So here's today's agenda. We're going to talk about both the 2023 and the 2024 equipment grants. Um, we're going to touch base again on the Healthy Meals Incentives Recognition Awards. We're going to do some reminders about claims for reimbursement, as well as some reminders for verification. Um, some reminders about the Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Program. We're going to go over a few things about the administrative review. Um, we'll go over memos and some resources and talk about some upcoming trainings and events. So first we'll go over the 23 and 24 equipment grants. So as we've mentioned previously, there's always a chance for a second allocations of funds and that's exactly what happened for the 2023 equipment grant. So all of the first allocation funds have been processed and distributed and there were some unused funds. So there will be a second allocation and those second allocations will be sent out this week and they were actually sent out right before this call. So please check your email because you may have received an email that you were granted a second allocation of funds for the 2023 equipment grant. So as far as the 2024 equipment grant, um, you know, please note that we did receive a lot less funding this year compared to the 22 and 23 grant. So this year we were only allocated $166,137. Um, there is, will be a training on it and that has been scheduled for October 8th. So you can register for that on Louisiana Fit Kids website. Um, we are, we just received approval from USDA so we can, officially opened the application. Um, the, it's anticipated to open on October 14th, and the application is expected to close on November 15th, and the awarding will be expected to be sometime in December, but th that information will be shared with you on that training on October 8th. Uh, and if you have any questions about the equipment grant, you can contact Stacy Griffin. Her contact information is on this slide. So I want to go over a few reminders about claims for reimbursement. Um, however, there is a full presentation and sli the slides and recording from the August 23rd training. They can be found on Louisiana Fit Kids website. We're going to go over a few um, important things. So as a reminder, to be eligible for claim for reimbursement, the organization must have a complete and approved uh, NSLP application. All claims must be submitted electronically by assessing the CMP website. A separate claim must be submitted for every month, even if the month consists of only one day of meal service. SFAs should submit claims by the 10th of the month. The company bought out, Chesapeake bought out. Say okay, someone's speaking. I need them to mute themselves, please. Um, so SFA should submit claims by the 10th of the month following the claim period, and SFAs must submit by the 60th calendar day following that claim period. And you can only submit one claim for each child nutrition program per processing period. If the claim is not submitted by the 60th calendar day, SFAs may request a one-time exception that can only be awarded once every three years, and that's pending approval from us. Um, this exemption requires a written justification to be submitted to the state agency, and then SFAs are provided a confirmation letter regarding the results of the exemption request.
And claims are color coded in the CNP website. So completed claims are those that have been paid and they're gonna display in pink. Any waiting claims, which are those that have been submitted and are waiting to be processed and paid are displayed in blue. And any open claims are those, those claims that you have that are unsubmitted, they're gonna be displayed in yellow. So now let's go over some verification reminders. And again, the full presentation and recording from the September 17th training can also be found on Louisiana Fit Kids website. So which SFAs are required to complete the process of verification? So all SFAs that participate in the school meal programs who utilize free and reduced meal applications must complete the verification process. So this includes those traditional SFAs, SFAs that are partial CEP and RCCIs with day students. Partial CEP districts will have to complete the entire verification process only for those schools that are not CEP. And SFAs who do not collect free and reduced meal applications do not have to perform the verification process, but must still complete that online verification summary form that's due in January. So at or around the beginning of the, the program year, the schools will collect the student eligibility by direct certification matches and also by collecting those household applications. The school is going to process the application information at face value and approves the child for the meal benefits. So starting on October 1st, so basically starting today, you're going to count all of the applications certified at face value that did not match on direct certification. You're gonna use this total to calculate how many applications you need to verify. And then you have until November 15th to verify these applications. And then by January 10th, that verification summary report must be submitted through the CNP verification summary form. And so for questions about verification, you can contact Kylie Champagne. Um, and her contact information is on this slide. So now let's go over some fresh food and vegetable program reminders. Um, the presentation slides from the September 25th training were sent to the current SFAs that are participating in fresh food and vegetable. So this information that we're about to go over is only relevant to those school food authorities that have that were invited to participate in the Fresh Food and Vegetable Program and are currently participating. So if you were invited to the Fresh Food and Vegetable to participate, I'm just gonna give you a brief overview. So the Fresh Food and Vegetable Program is a grant program administered at the federal level by USDA and FNS. The Fresh Food and Vegetable Program is administered at the state level by the Louisiana Department of Education Division of Nutrition Support. At the state level, we are required to select specific elementary schools for funding and to provide oversight of school implementation. Schools are to utilize the Fresh Food and Vegetable Program funds to provide fresh produce to students at no cost. For the 24-25 school year, the allocation period for fresh food and vegetable is October 1st, 2024 through September 30th. LDOE strongly encourages all funds to be spent by September 30th of 2025. All expenditures are claimed for the month in which they occur. Each awarded school will be allocated a different sum based on enrollment, Allocations are determined based on a threshold of $50 to $75 per student. And we are in the process of determining allocations and getting them approved. And a memo will be sent out once the allocations have been approved. So the fresh food and vegetable claim for reimbursement must reflect the invoices for when you buy, not whenever you serve. The claim is submitted through the online CMP website on the blue fresh fruit and vegetable tab. Claims are submitted by site and reimbursement must be submitted within 60 days following the close of the claiming month. 
um, claims filed per site and funds cannot be transferred between sites within the district and only direct cost can be claimed. And if you have any questions regarding the Fresh Food and Vegetable Program, you can contact Dana Doza and her contact information is on this slide. So now let's go over a few administrative review reminders. So for those SFAs that are receiving an administrative review during the 24-25 school year, CN Resources provided a webinar on preparing for the administrative review. Lines should have been sent out to the registered participants. Um, the senior review specialist assigned to your review will be the main contact between you and the CNR review team. And you can call or email your senior review specialist anytime with questions about the review or the process. So be on the lookout for emails from admin review at cnresource.com because that is where those emails will be coming from. So LDOE is planning to provide technical assistance to as many SFAs as possible who are being reviewed during the 24-25 school year. We are in the process of working on a schedule and LDOE staff will be contacting SFA soon to schedule the technical assistance visit. LDOE staff is also planning to accompany CNR on several of their on-site reviews. And then we are also planning to conduct five of the administrative reviews. However, CNR will still conduct the procurement review for those SFAs. And we will be in contact with those SFAs soon of the ones that we're gonna take over their review. So we talked about this last month, but I wanted to go over it again. It's about the Healthy Meals Incentives Recognition Awards because USDA is really pushing these right now. Um, just a little bit about it again. The Healthy Meals Incentives Recognition Awards recognize and share best practices from school food authorities who made operational changes to improve the nutritional quality of their school meals as well as SFAs who engage students and families in nutrition education and in the planning and preparation of nutritious school meals. The application process has been streamlined to make it easier to apply and to be recognized. So you can learn more by clicking on the link on the slide. The application period closes on June 30th of 2025, so you still have plenty of time to apply. Um, when you do apply, you can expect to receive a response within two months of submission. SFAs can apply for any of the awards at any point during the application period, but may only receive each award once. SFAs are eligible to apply for the recognition awards if they participate in National School Lunch Program and or the School Breakfast Program. So some award benefits include a complimentary registration and travel stipend, to attend the exclusive National Healthy Meal Summit in Las Vegas, which we do have one person, um, one SFA that has received an award and we were actually able to allow um, up to five other SFAs to attend that we were able to invite and we will have two eight state agency members attend as well. And that's gonna actually be in the middle of October, I think October 21st, I believe. Um, you also, some of the other benefits include recognition on USDA, um, and on HMI websites, uh, national and local recognition and media opportunities, the opportunity to network with other HMI awardees, and a toolkit with promotional resources. So here's some of the award categories. So the Trailblazer Award Series it highlights the SFAs paving the path with gradual changes in school menus to be consistent with the 2020-2025 Dietary Guidelines for Americans, specifically for reducing sodium in school lunch and added sugars in school breakfast. Um, the Innovation Award Series highlights unique and innovative approaches not traditionally used in schools 
as well as achievements SFAs are making to engage students and families to offer nutritious meals. And these SFAs are working toward exceeding the school nutrition standards. So you can apply for any of the awards at any point during the application, but again, you can only, you can only receive each award once. And so again, we wanna recognize and congratulate the first Healthy Meals Incentives Recognition Award in Louisiana. St. Helena Parish School District received the award for making improvements to the nutritional quality of their district school meals, um, awarded by USDA um, and the Food Nutrition Services in collaboration with Action for Healthy Kids. St. Helena received the Small All Rural School Food Authority Breakfast Trailblazer Award for switching to reduced sugar cereal and eliminating grain-based desserts from their breakfast menu. So again, congratulations to St. Helena and their director, Tracy, for her team and her team for receiving this award. So next we're gonna go over the memos that have been posted since the last monthly call. We don't have that many. So on this slide is the list. Um, we have one, two, three, five of them to go over. So the first is Memo SFS 24-105. This is about Louisiana Form to School Conference. Um, that is actually tomorrow um, at Pennington. Um, the annual Louisiana Form to School Conference will gather participants from across the state for an opportunity to learn, celebrate, and share and inspire the movement of bringing healthy, local, sustainable grow, grown foods to the minds and plates of students in Louisiana and beyond. Um, attendees will experience in-person sessions guided by farm to school champions from across the state. In addition, the gathering will feature a venue for networking and a relaxed face-to-face -face environment and allowing participants to grow lasting connections. So some of the session topics include hydroponics and aquaponics, uh, working with children in the garden, connecting with local producers, serving local throughout the school year, um, form to school beyond the classroom, and early integration of form to school. And so to register and for more information, you can click on the link on the screen. It's also it's on, it's on the LSU Ag Center's website as well. Um, memo SFS 24. Dash 106 is about the August SNAP and TANF files. The August SNAP and TANF data has been loaded into eScholar. Um, they've run the statewide matches. So public school districts are resolving in near matches, SNAP batches number 9131 and TANF batch number 9129. And the non-public schools should resolve the near matches in the batch, SNAP batch 9, 9132 and TANF batch number 9130. And as always, if you need assistance with this, please contact Jane. Um, next is memo SFS 24-107 is the commodity storage fees payments. So over the past few years, LDOE has had sufficient administrative funds available at the end of the federal program year to enable the agency to provide some assistance with the cost of commodity storage fees paid by SFAs. Um, it doesn't happen every year, but this year, um, LDOE has determined that there were sufficient funds available to provide SFAs with some assistance towards their commodity storage expenses. So based upon the cost that was charged by the Department of Agriculture and Forestry and the payments that were received by the Department of Ag and Forestry, USDA administrative funds were available to LDOE, they were applied towards those amounts. So according to the LDOE Appropriation Control staff, payments did go out on September 17th. So just check to see if you received payments. And again, we were able to reimburse the amount that was actually paid by your SFA. Um, memo SFS 24-108 is the verification response rates for the 24-25 school year. Um, so in this memo is the 23-24 verification non-response non rate. Um, USDA has maintained that verification will be mandatory this year. Um, the verification method to be used for this school year is dependent upon the non-response rate from the 23-24 school year. 
So SFAs with a non-response rate of 20% or greater must use the standard or basic method for verification this school year. And SFAs with a non-response rate of less than 20% may use any verification method. So they can use standard basic, they can use alternate or random or alternate two, which is focus in this school year. Um, a reminder that the standard basic method is a 3% sample of free and reduced apps utilizing error prone application. So also the following resources are available and linked on the memo to assist you in that verification process. So. The verification toolkit from USDA is linked on there. The Louisiana Department of Education's annual verification process webinar is on Louisiana Fit Kids, which is linked on the memo as well, as well as the Department of Education's verification guide is linked. And the last memo is memo SFS 24-109. It's about the August Medicaid free lunch and Medicaid reduced lunch. So they have been loaded into eScholar. So districts need to resolve the near matches and those of public schools, you need to resolve the near matches in the batches number 9345 for the Medicaid free, the Medicaid reduced lunch batch number 9346. And the non-public schools is Medicaid free lunch batch number 9380 and Medicaid reduced lunch is Batch number 9400. And again, if you need assistance with this, please email Jane. So on the next few slides, I have provided some resources that SFAs may find helpful um, and some information they can use for this school year. So again, I wanted to mention about the Code of Federal Regulations that we follow for school breakfast and school lunch. Um, I also included on the slide the federal regulations for determining eligibility, as well as the federal regulations related for procurement. Um, so when we receive these questions, and many a times this is what we reference and cite in our responses. So 7 CFR Part 210 is your information on the National School Lunch Program. 7 CFR Part 220 is on the school breakfast program. 7 CFR Part 245 is determining the eligibility for free and reduced price meals and free milk in school. And then 2 CFR Part 200 is the uniform administrative requirements, cost principles, and audit requirements for federal awards. Okay, so in today's call, I wanna highlight the Louisiana MyPlate 678. That is a Louisiana Team Nutrition Project. So MyPlate 678 aims to help Louisiana sixth, seventh, and eighth graders, which are your middle school students, to adopt healthy eating patterns through increased consumption of nutritious food and beverages offered through NSLP and SBP. Team Nutrition leverages evidence-based practices and policies to support child nutrition programs through training and technical assistance, nutrition education for children, and school and community support for healthy eating and physical activity. So the focus areas of Louisiana MyPlate 678 include nutrition education, recipe and menu development, cafeteria beautification, culinary training and technical assistance for school nutrition professionals and build support for healthy school environments. So more information on Louisiana MyPlate 678 can be found on the Louisiana Fit Kids website under the Team Nutrition Resources tab. So if you go to the main page and click on resources and then click on Team Nutrition, you will find um, where, where the the Team Nutrition My, Louisiana My Place 678 can be found. So this will take you to the next page, which is where you're going to click on that Louisiana My Place 678. And then from there, you'll see the different Louisiana My Place focus areas. So you're able to click on each of the sections for more information. So under the nutrition education section of Louisiana MyPlate, 
you will find resources such as USDA MyPlate, Louisiana Resources and Louisiana Ag Center, and Farm to School. And you will also find some quizzes, music, video game, video, and even some games. And then under the culinary training section, you will find culinary training videos and materials from the Institute of Child Nutrition and Produce Safety University, as well as some culinary resources. And then under the recipe and menu development section, you will find recipes from the Louisiana Festival of Flavors, Clean Nutrition, Child Nutrition Recipe Box, the LSU Ag Center, Eat Smart Recipes, and USDA My Plate Kitchen. And there's also news and other resources from USDA Food Nutrition Service. And then under the School Food Environment Assessment section, you will find tools and resources from Alliance for Healthier Generation and the CDC, as well as research from USDA and the CDC. So if you get a chance, go onto the Louisiana Fit Kids website and check out that, that section on Louisiana Mod Plate 678. It has a lot of good resources and a lot of good information for you to, that you can use in your school system. So let's talk about some upcoming trainings and events. So the upcoming LDOE trainings, they have been scheduled for the next two months and they're posted on Louis some are posted on Louisiana Fit Kids website. So today, October 1st, is the monthly call. And then like we said earlier, on October 8th, we will have a training on the 2024 equipment grant. Then on October 18th at the SNAL conference, we will have a state update. But for those that are not attending the SNAL conference, we will have the slides from the state update posted to the Louisiana Fit Kids website. Um, we will not have a November monthly call since the state update is two weeks prior. Um, the only training scheduled right now in November is the team up procurement training that is on November 19th. And on December 3rd, we will have the December monthly call. And then finally, on December 17th, we will be we will have that verification summary form training. So as we mentioned earlier in the memo sections, the 2024 Louisiana Farm to School Conference is being held tomorrow, Wednesday, October 2nd, from, from 8 to 4 p.m. at the Pennington Biomedical Conference Center. Um, and for more information, you can register or you can scan the QR code. Again, you need to register for this training. I believe it's still open, um, but you, the only way you can find out is if you go and click on the link or scan the QR code. Um, National School Lunch Week is coming up. It is October 14th through 18th. Um, the theme this year is School Lunch Pirates, Find Your Treasure. And for more information about National School Lunch Week, you can visit the School Nutrition Association web website. I have it linked on this slide. Um, this annual observance has promoted the importance of healthy school lunch in a child's life and the impact it has both in and out of the classroom. So during this week-long celebration, which is out annually, usually during the second full week of October, um, SNA members and their students can celebrate with special menus, events, activities, and, and more, with all with the goal of increasing student participation, spreading the message to parents that you're serving healthy, delicious lunch at school. Um, you can even get some media coverage from local papers, TV stations, and connecting with teachers and administrators at your school or in your district to spread the word that school meals are healthy and delicious. So the SNAL conference, so the School Nutrition Association of Louisiana, the 69th annual conference will be October 18th through 20th at the Golden Nugget Casino in Lake Charles. Um, LDOE, we will be presenting, like I said before, a state update on the Friday. And the Office of State Procurement will also be presenting a training on the Friday. And in addition, LDOE will have an education session on the administrative review process on the Saturday. 
And for more information, please visit the Food Nutrition Association of Louisiana website, which I have linked on this slide. So we talked about the team up procurement training. We are encouraging all SFAs to register for that training. Registration is open on Louisiana Fit Kids website. I have it linked on this slide. Um, the training will be on November 19th at Pennington. The cost is $30, which includes lunch. And the Urban School Food Alliance has a cooperative agreement with the USDA to provide these team up trainings around the country relating to procurement. This project seeks to improve the procurement practices for districts of all sizes in both urban and rural areas. And through the review and assessment of current rules, practices, and training materials, including the expertise of stakeholders involved all along the supply chain, this project will provide school nutrition leaders with easy to use procurement tools and a voice in the process. Um, this project's efforts are focused on redesigning the procurement process to put power in the hands of school nutrition program administrators and developing a process to build better partnership with suppliers and reinventing how School Meals Marketplace does business. So for more information about Urban School Food Alliance, you can visit their website that's linked on this slide. And then a little more information to you about the training itself, because we've received some, some questions. So the team up training is brought to you by the Urban School Food Alliance co with the USDA co-op agreement on improving school, school food procurement and is also put on by Louisiana Department of Education. Um, it is titled, Putting the Puzzle Pieces of Procurement Together, Concentrate on Quality, Not Quantity. So participants attending the training will understand how procurement and school food service is a process that takes time and commitment. You can identify 12 steps of procurement that are essential to being successful. You're going to practice a variety of procurement steps to better understand why they are critical to good procurement practices. We're going to discuss the idea of developing solicitations, awarding vendors based on a service to deliver rather than the lowest price point. And then you're going to also be able to understand the value of an RFP and developing strong, committed partnerships. So the training is going to include working to practice developing new procurement practices, some presentation and discussion of best practices in school procurement. Also, it's going to include some presentations and discussions with school nutrition directors in Louisiana that have established school food procurement best practices and other activities. And this will be a very informative and also an interactive training that will be very beneficial, we feel, to all SFAs. So with that, that ends today's monthly call. Um, as always, if you have questions, you can give us a call at the, the main number, 225-342-9661, or you can email the general email address, childnutritionprograms at la.gov. I do see we do have some in the chat. Okay, thank you, Angela. I do see that the form to school um, registration has been closed. Um, Jolene, if you registered for the procurement training, if you register on Louisiana Fit Kids website, normally when you try to register again, it will tell you you've already registered. But normally you also should receive a, a confirmation email when you register. Oh, Kathy has confirmed, Jolene, you are registered. <laughs> oh, yes. With the payment for that, please, if you're going to be paying with a with a credit card, please pay online. Please don't, don't try to pay with a credit card on site.
Okay, I am not seeing any other questions that are coming through the chat at this time. So with that, I will go ahead and end today's monthly call. Like I said, you can always give us a call at the general number or give us a send us an email at the general email address and we'll be happy to answer your questions. Everyone have a good rest of your afternoon.